This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Mang's T72B1, Ravel's Shackleton, Mobius's Discovery, Hobby Boss's LKW Truck, and Wingnut Wings Dolphin. This episode of New Product Rundown proudly brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, the source for all your workbench storage needs, and by Cult TV Man's Hobby Shop, the place to go for science fiction and fantasy kits and accessories. We're back with another packed episode of Fine Scale Modeler's New Product Rundown. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. By now, many of you, like us, are chock full of turkey, ham, sweet potatoes, dressing, pie, eggnog. So sit back and digest these new kits, starting with Meng's 135th scale T72B1. This variant of the vehicle includes explosive reactive armored blocks on the hull and turret. The Russian army used these in the wars in Chechnya and South Ossetia. Molded in tan plastic, the kit features a one-piece lower hull with sharply defined suspension mounts and hatches. The road wheels mount to full-length torsion bars that should leave some or all of the arms movable. A jig helps align them as the glue sets. The idlers and drive sprockets show good bolt and hub detail. The tracks comprise individual links held together with plastic pins for working runs. A two-part jig speeds track assembly. Mang's T90 uses a similar process and I recommend cutting the sprues off the pins with a razor saw. The upper hull has bolts, louvers, and reinforcing ridges on the fenders that are shown underneath, too. Toolboxes and fuel panniers fill the fenders. The same sprue has the unditching log, front fenders, and engine deck parts, including finely molded handles. The glasses plate and upper front hull show detail like the rest of the hull, including wiring, mounting bosses, and more. Separate hatches have inside faces. Fine parts such as brush guards, wiring, and handles will require care during removal from the sprues and cleanup to prevent damage. The various fender parts are beveled to thin outer edges. Ejector pin marks mar the interfaces, but they should be mostly hidden on the finished model. The prominent fuel tanks on the rear plate have nicely molded straps, with plumbing molded in a flexible vinyl. The same material provides the mantlet dust cover and applique armor for the turret. This stuff responds to solvent cement. Some of the ERA come as individual blocks with molded attachments. Others are grouped to fit sections of the hull or turret. Rear inserts are given for the blocks that protrude past the body. Most of the so-called Dolly Parton turret is provided as a single upper section with cast texture and open hatches. The lower section has molded mounts for ERA blocks. The main gun comprises multiple sections, including a slide molded fume extractor and one piece muzzle. Three multi-part stowage boxes mount to the turret along with lights and weapon sighting equipment. The commander's cupola with its armored shield and attached Dushka machine gun is a kit unto itself and the hatch can be left movable. Clear plastic provides light lenses, vision blocks, and periscopes, as well as sighting optics. Photo etched metal is used for the engine grills and a wheel painting mask. Braided metal is given for the tow cables. Decals and color diagrams show markings for nine Russian tanks, including several from the conflicts in Chechnya and South Ossetia. Fit and finish on Meng's previous T-72s has been first rate, and this kit looks like it should be a fine addition to that family. From Ravel, Germany, we have a 172nd scale Avro Shackleton. This kit represents the earlier tail-dragging Mark II set up for airborne early warning work. The Shackleton is the ultimate version of British four-engine prop planes that trace their lineage to the Lancaster bomber of World War II. The fuselage parts are marked by fine recessed rivets and panel lines. Separate nose and rear section account for differences between the versions. Inside the nose is a crew position with seat and sight. The cockpit has a floor and bulkhead, seats and controls, instrument panel with molded dials and pedals. Aft of the bomb bay is another crew compartment with floor, more walls, and seats, as well as instruments. The front of the bomb bay is occupied by the massive radar dome, but the rear section doors can be posed open or closed. More fine rivets, panel lines, inspection hatches, and raised details mark the long wings. A sturdy center section with spars supports and aligns the wings. Most of the control surfaces, including the ailerons, elevators, and rudders, are trapped between flight surface parts and are movable. The split flaps are designed to be posed down. There's good detail inside both the flaps and the bays. The inboard engine nacelles incorporate the main gear bays with well-molded legs, two-part wheels, bulkheads, and internal structural details. The front of the engine with complex intakes are single pieces. Four-part spinners trap the contra-rotating props. Finely molded small parts such as antennas and controls will need to be carefully removed to avoid damage. Clear plastic supplies the windows, domes, canopies, and lights. Well-defined framing should aid masking. Decals and color diagrams provide markings for two Shackletons from the Royal Air Force's No. 8th Squadron at Losey Mouth, Scotland. Another nice Avro from Ravel. Should look good on the shelf when it's done. 
Next, a subject that's been a long time coming, the discovery from 2001 of Space Odyssey. There was a lot of excitement when Mobius Models announced a plastic kit of the massive ship from Stanley Kubrick's 1968 science fiction film. How appropriate that we have this kit 50 years later, and it looks impressive in the box. Even in relatively small 1 to 144 scale, the kit will be 41 inches long when assembled. The ship consists of three major sections, starting with the command sphere. Raised and recessed details mark the major parts. Three inserts provide the pod bay doors, but you'll need to modify them if you want one open, Dave. The flight deck window comprises an insert for the recess, and then the kit's sole clear part. The sphere's rear connects the command section to the neck, a series of parts that merge with the cargo modules. At the other end of the ship is the propulsion block, which comprises upper and lower halves detailed with separate side panels and a bunch more stuff. Adapters connect the engine unit to the cargo modules and three long thrusters detail the back end. Between the command and propulsion sections sits the spine with 11 sections of cargo pods. There are 70 pods in five variations, so be prepared for a lot of basic gluing and cleanup. The pods fit spine sections, and the instructions provide a diagram that looks more like a chord progression or DNA map than kit assembly details. The seventh pod includes the antenna module with support and two sizes of dish. In order to support the lanky ship, Mobius provides sturdy metal rods that thread the cargo module supports and are anchored to the command, antenna, and propulsion modules. Metal rods also support the ship on three separate stands. No decals are provided, but the instructions provide several ideas for making the model resemble the filmy miniature with careful painting and oversprays. Size alone will make this model impressive, but it's the details that will make it soar. Back on land, here's Hobby Boss's 135th scale LKW 5-ton truck. Built by MAN, the KAT-1 4x4 vehicle serves the German Army and Air Force as a transport. It's based on a heavy-duty chassis built from two long side frames and round cross members. There's a little bit of engine in this curbside model, but it does feature a transfer case, front and rear axles with differentials, drive shafts, and the exhaust. The remainder of the drivetrain includes springs, shock absorbers, wheels, and a lot more. Soft vinyl tires with sharp tread provide traction. Much of the cab is molded as a single part. Inside is a dashboard, with separate instrument cluster, steering wheel, pedals, gear shift and grab handle, floor and roof details, rear wall, seats, and doors with detailed interior surfaces. Clear parts supply the windshield, windows, mirrors, head and tail lights, and dome lights for the cab. Pre-cut masks aid painting the model with the windows in place. The one-piece bed receives separate frames underneath, side walls detailed on both sides, front wall, tailgate with steps and ladder, and rifle racks and bows for the bed cover with separate bars. Solid looking multi-part seats line the walls. Photo Etch Metal supplies brackets, rifle holders, handles, jerry can racks, and more. Decals and color diagrams provide markings for two trucks, one in Kosovo, the other in UN service. Another interesting soft skin that will look good either on its own or as part of a larger diorama. Finally, here's the latest from Wingnut Wings, a 132nd scale sup with the Dolphin. Not as well known as its predecessor, the Camel, the streamlined British fighter served Royal Air Force and Royal Naval Air Squadrons throughout 1918. The one-piece wings have molded stitching, rib tape, ribs, and feature separate ailerons. The lower wing includes some of the internal cockpit structure. The rest of the cockpit features side frames with integrated cabane struts, wicker seat, fuel tank, instrument board, and Vickers machine guns. Up front sits a detailed 200 horsepower V8 Hispano Suiza engine with separate cylinder blocks, sump, prop shaft, intake manifold, magnetos, and carburetor. All of that gets sandwiched into the fuselage halves with raised stitching, access hatches, and rivets. A separate cowl top, nose, and early and late cell radiators finish the front. The thin vertical and horizontal stabilizers are molded with their respective control surfaces. Thin struts, two-part wheels, optional propellers, and optional wing guns finish the Dolphin. Clear plastic provides wing inspection panels, lights, and windscreen. Photo Etch Metal supplies a harness, gun sights, and cocking handles. Cartograph decals provide markings for five aircraft. One from the Royal Navy, one in low visibility RAF markings, and three in regular RAF insignia, one each flown by pilots born in the US, New Zealand, and Australia. Another World War I winner from Wingnut Wings. Look for detailed reviews of the Shackleton, Dolphin, and Discovery in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the February issue on sale January 2nd. And don't forget to check out the Combat Hobby Store for all of your essential tools, books, and back issues. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Aaron Skinner. We'll see you next year. Happy New Year. It's kind of that. Mm -hmm. Comma, 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 comma.
Come on, 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 come